Hi, welcome to another episode of Manju Ramanan Talks and today I have a very very beautiful lady as my guest. She is the founder of the Meta Film Festival that we saw in Dubai recently. And if you know Dubai and if you know the UAE, of late we don't have too many film festivals around. And so I'm very happy to first of all to know that there is a film festival in this region and that there is a lady heading this festival and she's none other than Leila Masine and she's my guest for today and welcome to the show Leila very happy to be with you Anusha thank you very much for having me and what a beautiful festival you put together recently at the Nakheel Mall uh, and how many films uh, were showcased we had 67 films at the festival with 58 in competition Wow. And how many countries do they represent? Uh, we have films from 25 different countries at the inaugural edition. 25. And how long did you start preparation? Oh, actually, <laughs> not as long as we should have. So we kind of um, launched a festival in May um, okay. of this year. And by end of October, uh, we're in, in mm -hmm. showtime. That's a really short time. It was a very short time. It was a race and, against time. And then you put your jury together, you put your films together, you had entries, you had to choose. I mean, must have been a marathon. It was a marathon. Yes. Um, as, as I told you before, yes. we, you know, the yes. camera went on. Yes. I felt like it was baptism through fire. Um, uh -huh. It was a ma million miles an hour. Yes. Um, but we pulled it off and we couldn't be happier about it. Okay. Tell me about your own interest in cinema. You've been associated with cinema. You've been a fond cinema lover and you also like a bit of Bollywood is what we know. So tell me about your interest in cinema. Um, I think uh, my interest in cinema is my interest in art and culture. I'm passionate about it. Um, my mother has a bachelor in literature, um, in Farsi literature. Um, and um, so I grew up in a household that had poems and books uh, from all around the world translated in various languages. Um, I was second to theatre as a young child because my mother was passionate about theatre. Um, my father um, used to be a very big um, fan of uh, peculiar media, so I was exposed to, um, you know, uh, Alfred Hitchcock films at an age that I don't think I will actually allow my children <laughs> to watch a Hitchcock film. Yeah. Um, so I was brought up in a household where art and culture and cinema and music led the way. Mm -hmm. um, and we were taken around the world by my parents, um, a country, a different country once a year. Um, and we would be definitely taken to the cinema and watch a film in an original language. Wow. Um, we were taken to little cafes and shops all in the back alleys. And their entire thing was to expose my sister and I to the world and diversity. Um, this, as I grew up, became my passion. Um, cinema became what I love. Um, and obviously, growing up in Dubai was instrumental in my exposure to the world. Um, you know, going to friends' house and watching a movie in their first language yes. um, and having them tell me about the background story or the actor or the actress. Um, so it became a kind of a ingrown habit of right. this love for, for cinema. Um, on Bollywood, uh, my business partner in my company, who is also one of my best friends, um, happens to be Indian. Um, he's not only my best best friend, business partner. I'm also a mother to his a godmother to his beautiful daughter. So I don't know where our lives literally start and end. And and through him, then I have had a lifetime of exposure to yeah. Bollywood and, and Indian cinema uh, as a whole. Um, so that kind of brings me to wanting to head a film festival here in Dubai. The, the gap was missed um, for, for about, I think, five years. Yes, yes. Um, and um, I always say that someone has to take the first step. And in this kind of instance, I was like, why can't I be that person? Wow, we love you for that. Because <laughs> I think you. most most cinema lovers in Dubai wait for that, used to wait for December for that festival to start. And then we have one, which is... Now, when is the next one and what are plans now? So the next one will happen again in October. Um, we have expanded it from three year days that was this, this okay. year to five days um, next year. Um, it will be from the 26th, 25th to the 30th of October. Um, it will take place um, at several cinemas um, across UAE and we're just kind of expanding the geographical reach so more people mm -hmm. can have access to cinemas, so not one singular location. So we're working on expanding locations as well as offerings. This year I think we had 
um, four workshops next year, we're creating 10 workshops. We're working on a film fund for short films. We are working on bringing um, Hollywood executives and big, big finance houses okay. um, to kind of conduct um, uh, our version of what would be Dragon's Den, and I can't use that word because it's trademark it, marked yeah. by, by that share, but kind of the same concept where you have 15 minutes to pitch your idea to people that could actually sign you up. So we were trying not to only bring phenomenal world cinema, actors and actresses, directors, celebrities, but really be instrumental in creating the creative economy backed by the cinema industry in the UAE. Okay, and the fact that uh, you work on a very, very strict cost basis, which is, I think, one of the most important parts here to mention because a lot of film festivals start very big. They start in a very grandiose way and they can't sustain. Uh, here's a lady who has got her math right, I think, and uh, is sure that the festival will sustain because it is made in a sustainable and a very, very clear agenda to to make it, uh, you know, make it make it uh, happen every year in a very, very careful cost. So tell me about that process. Look, um, I'll just use a very uh, funny example, right? Um, when we go to school, we first learn numbers, then we learn multiplication and addition, and then, you know, eventually we move our way up to campus, right? You cannot teach campus to someone who doesn't know how to multiply. Mm. Um, and I think with business, any business sector, that's kind of the strategy. You start with the building box and you put up correctly and you look at organic growth. Organic growth is sustainable. So, um, you know, if you start with a festival, in my opinion, that is like 10 days, brings um, hundreds of celebrities, which are associated with, you know, hundreds and millions of dirhams of cost, um, and throw everything at it, obviously it's well received, it's beautiful, um, you know, but it becomes a costly exercise that is not sustainable. And if the funding dries up or gets reduced, all of a sudden you have a model that was not created based on step by step kind of um, growth. Uh, with the festival this year, we started with three days, four workshops, seven juries, five years, 20 juries, maybe four yeah, films, 10 slowly. workshops, slowly. Mm -hmm. And as we've kind of demonstrated that it can be done on a cost effective mechanism, um, you know, I'm sure next year, a lot of the features of the event will get sponsored. And the right. year after, a lot more players will come on board. So we're trying to create something industry, industry for the industry. Right. When you do that, and you do it correctly, and it's content-led, and it's culture-led, and you bring universities to unfold, and you demonstrate that you're trying to do something that is not a PR exercise, but it actually serves the industry, I think that's kind of the formula for sustainability. At least that's what we we're hoping for. Amazing, because that's exactly what, like we spoke earlier before the interview, that a lot of film festivals are known for the red carpets and less for the films that they uh, showcase. Uh, with due respect to all the film festivals and all the red carpets, but this one, how is it going to be different? Look, we will have the red carpet. We are in Dubai. Um, you know, um, I have friends in the U.S. Uh, where I studied and lived many, many, many years of my life, and they're like, oh, have you watched Dubai Bling? And I'm like, no, I live Dubai Bling, right? Uh, not, not that I'm a very blingy person, but you cannot yes. help but live in the UAE and, yeah. you know... Not be touched by not, glamour. Exactly, it's glamour. So we are launching a festival in one of the most glamorous cities in the world. So of course there will be the red carpet. And when the cast and crew come, they will wear their beautiful attire and they will shine. The power to um, them, yeah. Exactly, you know, because that's the function of it. When we have the after parties or the award ceremonies, you can't do things that are so less decent. than yeah. prestigious and diamond yeah. studded in Dubai. You know, yeah. that's kind of our essence. So that will be a part of it, but that's a complementary part of it, right? Mm -hmm. The beautiful people coming, looking glamorous to enjoy an evening, complements the content that is at the festival. So you don't so have to compromise on the content. Exactly. It is content first, and obviously that content is produced for beautiful people who can then come and enjoy a little bit of yes. glamour. Yes. Exactly. So content first, glamour follows. Absolutely, a thousand percent, correct. I mean, look at all of the leading actors and actresses in any country in the world. A lot of them are stunning, yes. but they haven't gotten to where they are because they're because stunning. Because they're stunning. They've gotten where they are because they are great talents, yes. right? So it's always like that. You need to put content and talent first, and then everything else follows. Yes. So when we look at the next festival, 
do are you going to be encouraging films from this region filmmakers from this region absolutely i mean the entirety of this process is to encourage filmmakers from this region we are we engaged with three different universities with communication and programs this year in terms of volunteers we're already talking to them about much more um larger participation the workshops that are being designed the tent that i mentioned are actually being designed with um feedback from seven different universities mm-hmm. right now so they are telling us what it is that the, the students need um for example something that i never thought about they're like can you have a workshop on on um special makeup right mm-hmm. um can you bring a very good makeup artist that does special makeup for various things because we don't have anyone that specialized in the middle east so we're really designing the learning elements of the festival to cater to the next generation of filmmakers mm-hmm. in addition to that we are launching a film fund for three short filmmakers that are based from the arab world they can be from every and any nationality but they have to be based in the arab world um and we will basically showcase three of their films and then they get funds to make three other short films that then will debut at the 20 20- 24 um and then the year after we're hoping to do the same thing for a feature film um wow. that is born from the festival so the festival needs to really become the place where you come with your ideas right. walk away with the training the development the backing and a little bit of money to go and and make it happen right so tell me about the films that were showcased at the last film festival what are the films that touched you i'm sure it's unfair to tell uh, to ask somebody like you because you're the founder but the fact that any new language that you found in certain films that we can we can all yeah watch. i mean that's a very hard question to ask me um because obviously um i had to watch and approve the 67 films that we did end up showing and i don't think they would have made it um if i didn't think personally they're spectacular obviously i was in a part of the selection committee we had nine amazing people who took that yeah. very challenging task of now and now about 600 submissions to the 67 that made it to the yeah. festival um however i think the surprises for me so our winning film the best feature film um at the festival was a kasak film called mukhali um it is one of the most beautiful films i've ever seen and i also and and you know i think the surprise and the shock for me was that i never knew before this festival that kazakhstan has such a rich cinema culture we have five submissions that made wow. it made the cut um the other one that i think i would like to mention is the list of those who love me it's a turkish film um and um, and i think it won a special uh jury yes. prize mention um again the 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 shock factor for me was that it's an art cinema film but the production and the cinematography is on par to that of the biggest box office Hollywood production. I mean from a and and I think this was the consensus when I was sat with the jury like you could not find find fault with the cinematography and production post production of this film. Wow. It was spectacular and again Turkish um cinema is a massive massive cinema but I just was baffled that this level of artistic um, excellence. execution excellence and um, is is within that. Um I think um you know to mention others obviously we open with the film Emily um which uh, happens to be one of my favorite authors of all time um um and so i think seeing that uh, on a big screen and watching her journey uh was very touching for me and again it was a film that was made by uh, Frances O'Connor who is an actress made uh, directed this was her de- yeah. debut debut direct, um, directorial about a female that change literature right so that was a very powerful moment for me you know um to see that kind of sense of women empowerment right. um without saying this festival supports women empowerment you know right. just saying that we're opening with a film about a phenomenal woman made by a phenomenal woman yeah. at the festival that a woman has put together and i think that felt very very special for me amazing um and i think my favorite film at the festival was a 10 minute a uh, documentary from Iran called The Wound uh it's a short uh, not sorry not documentary it's a short film it was uh it, the film is actually in Kurdish so I had to watch it in the subtitle mm-hmm. as well um and it follows the story of 
a little nine-year-old um, whose area has been struck by earthquake um, and she's in this um, kind of half shift camps and she gets her monthly cycle and she thinks she's wounded right and it follows that story i watched this film and i sat and i saw i saw for 15 minutes i called my sister she came over i'm gonna i was like i want to show you something she watched the film and she saw it for 15 minutes and i think that's what cinema does right the, those stories they touch you you get goosebumps yeah. and yeah. you will remember i will remember this 15 yeah. 10 15 minute film for the rest of my life yeah. um the list goes on and on i can talk about the films at the festival forever but i think i'll leave it here to yes. try to keep it concise Amazing, because that's exactly what cinema does. It goes into areas where other forms of art might not be so easily penetrable. Uh, also, the fact that it reaches out to a larger audience and it touches them today with uh, short films and uh, easily WhatsAppable uh, short shots. Yes. I think we reached out to a larger audience more than the actual uh, festival where it is from. And why is it called a meta film festival? Uh, is there a reason for it? Yes, uh, actually. So we have uh, before the film festival, we launched a uh, cinema convention for the for the region, um, which focuses on Middle East, Africa, and Turkey. Yeah. Um, so if um, you know about cinema conventions, you know there is CinemaCon in the U.S., which is massive and focuses on the North American yeah. market. Then there's this the New Europe version that focuses on the European cinema industry. Um, so ours focused on, and then there's Cine Asia that fo focused on Asia. So between Asia and Europe, there was not ever a cinema convention that focused on the uh, business, of, business of theatrical distribution and filmmaking in this part. So we launched the Meta Film Festival, um, Meta Cinema Forum five years ago. Next year will be sixth edition that brought together the cinema exhibitors, and, you know, all of the distributors, uh, studios from around the world, including the big name ones. Um, technology providers and everyone in, in between. They come for two days and they talk about the business of cinema, content, theatrical industry, OTP platforms, so on and so forth. A lot of um, content is shown at the slave presentations where studios bring their content for the upcoming year, so on and so forth. Um, it's two year, two days of jam-packed like business of, of cinemas. Um, and this is where Meta Film Fest was born. So we've been doing Meta Cinema Forum with all of the relevant stakeholders in this part of the world for five going on to six years now and this year in 2022 we decided that well at the end of the day the cinema is a business of reaching out and getting that content into the audience so we right. always talk about the business but we've you know all feel the void of a festival then that showcases what we're talking right. about to the larger audience at the end of the day that's right. what the business is about so everybody's like, why don't we launch the festival as a continuation edition complement to the to the forum? Um, and so we did. So we kind of stopped with the meta branding because when I pick up the phone to the EVP of a studio in Hollywood and I say, hey, I'm splitted from meta, they know exactly who I am. So just kind of leave fast a little bit there. Great. And what about films that people have uh, missed watching? What are they going to do? Um, so for this edition, uh, unfortunately, we did not um, plan to have them on a platform for um, continuation. Um, and a lot of the films that were at our festival are still making their rounds at right. other festivals. At other festivals. Um, so um, everything that showed at our festival was a premiere. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of global premieres, Middle East premieres, and some UA, UA premieres. And again, there's at least 20 of those films that are still making their rounds. Okay. So what we will try to do, um, and this will be work in progress, and we talked about kind of organic growth. Um, I can't promise that I'll do that this year right. or next year. It needs to be where it's supported, is to then bring a platform where all of the films at the festival can be you know, subscribe to and watch um, on this flat platform. It's, um, I mean, discussions with two different firms that provide the service. We need to go back to all the filmmakers, distribution agencies, that kind of, um, the dialogues are ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, when will this happen? Hopefully very, very soon. Okay. Um, I, can I give it a timeline? No, I need to make sure that again, it is sustainable and yeah. it will be something that will be well received by everybody. And of course it is in effect. Um, all of the brilliant films that they still need to make their debuts around the yes. world before they, they kind of land up on a um, platform, but it's, it, it will happen. Would you look at an OTT platform yourself? 
Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, nothing is out of uh, consideration, yeah. right? Nothing is impossible. Um, and um, we talked that again a little bit before this is, um, as I'm doing this, I'm learning about this industry. I mean, I think this is what we need to do is on a daily basis say, okay, what am I going to learn today and how I'm going to add from my learnings to the festival. Um, so I am an open door. Anyone who comes with suggestion ideas, we hear it, we kind of jot it down and then say, okay, feasibility, who do we need? What level of support do we need? Um, so, you know, you just mentioned that I never actually thought about it, but, you know, it's not out of the realm of eventual possibilities. Yes, instead of a viewing library, you could have a channel. 100%. Which the world can watch. 100%. Correct. Right. So lovely talking to you and I'm looking forward to the next edition. And Thank you so much. Uh, also the fact that you've grown up in Dubai and uh, I think the growth of the city is also very close to the growth of your own life. And uh, yeah, let's, just before we wind up, I want to know uh, the fact that you grew up in Dera and then you tell me about your growth and the city's growth. And it's, it's yeah, so when uh, when we moved to Dubai, um, you know, it was a small, beautiful, no traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Only gonna think about it back then. With there's no traffic, small little city. So we moved to Dubai, and um, Dera side was you know kind of the established side. Um, so we moved um, to Dera on Maktoum Street, uh, right opposite. Uh, I think the hotel still uh, stands, Talish Palace. Um, that's where they started con constructing the first Itisala Tower of Dubai. So my sister and I were on the seventh story of this building. We used to go. And sit on the window ledge when they used to put the the, the cut off and saw the globe come up. The globe being uh. built, and it was the most fascinating thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we were children before, uh -huh. uh, you know, Netflix and YouTube, and 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 uh, so you had a chance to look out of the window. Even like, mobile phones, uh -huh. right? You know, the, my dad had one of one of those big massive oh. black ones. So okay. that was entertainment for us. So I saw the first tower get built, um, and then you know from that we moved to Garhud area. Um, which was a bit, you know, villa residential closer to our school, Dubai International School. Hello, I have to give a <laughs> shout to my my school as well. Um, and then from that to Jumeirah. Uh, right now, I live in Barsha South with my family. And Barsha South, when I moved to Dubai, was middle of the desert, literally, right? <laughs> and now this is um, this flourishing city. Yeah. So um, I grew with the city um, and I do have to mention, so I'm married, eventually got married to a local German. Um, so my daughters are Emiratis. So okay. I'm not only proud of Dubai because I grew up here. I am now mother of two brilliant, um, we don't call them geniuses anymore, they're <laughs> called highly gifted mm -hmm. uh, daughters with ridiculous IQs um, who are in all sorts of special programs because they're excelling at absolutely everything who are going to be the futures of this country. So I do this with a passion for the next generation because I've personally made two. <laughs> <laughs> More power to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for speaking to me. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you and speak to you. And Thank looking you. forward to the next edition of the Meta Film Festival Dubai. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone.